The Paris Agreement and Climate Geoengineering A report from 2017 from Berkeley, the University of California, the first annual research roundtable on global climate change. W. Burns and N. Craik were the ones on this roundtable to submit this report, and I was just having a little read through this, just to recap on geoengineering and how prominent not only it has been in the past, but how prominent it will be in the future. G'day everyone, Ethan Nash from TOTTnews.com back with another video. And as you can see on your screen, geoengineering is not a conspiracy theory. For people out there who believe that it is, it's been around for many decades, or over half a century now, and is admittedly set to become a major open factor with climate change going into the future. And if you have a read of this report, you can even see here, most parties have signed on and you see Australia, our 1.46% emissions share of the world. I think we need a carbon tax for that. <laughs> and if you scroll down a little bit here, climate geoengineering is described as options involving large-scale engineering of the environment in order to combat or counteract the effects of changes in atmospheric chemistry from the U.S. National Academy of Sciences, 1992. And it even takes you through the categories of geoengineering in this report and some of the techniques that they use in the modern world today. And why am I bringing this up? Well, geoengineering has obviously been a big topic this week as Australia suffers from some of the worst floods and as we've seen the devastating results across the east coast of Australia and even over to the west coast and up north for the last few months, there's been a lot of discussion around geoengineering. And if you're a member of TOTTnews.com, we had a big chat about geoengineering and the current weather chaos. I gave my experiences here in southeast Queensland and went through some of the legislative pieces that we see here in Australia and some of the previous flooding that has happened across the country in select locations which cloud seeding has been in question for so make sure you check that out if you are a member of the site and of course the australian companies manipulating our weather this article has been getting a lot of traction recently as more people start to learn the history of geoengineering here in australia from 1948 onwards and some of the companies some of the military agreements that we have and just a full rounded picture of geoengineering in the modern era some of the deeper links behind it which i'm sure you've probably all seen on the website so in this video i don't want to talk about geoengineering necessarily what i want to do in this video is talk about so if we all accept that geoengineering could have potentially played a part in these devastating floods that have gone across the east coast of Australia in particular. What could be the reason for this? And I'm bringing up a post here by Tazeway that was posted on Instagram yesterday. Is it just a coincidence that the region with the most free thinkers in New South Wales has been almost completely wiped out with the biggest floods in history and there is almost no support from the Australian government with no state of emergency declared? And it's a good question. We've seen the Byron region and surrounding suburbs. We've seen Lismore, a lot of the northern New South Wales area, which is very well known for alternative lifestyles, for bucking the system. We've reported on TOTT News a lot about their resistance to 5G towers and everything that's been going on in the regions in the northern New South Wales communities that are there. And so it's a good question, why has this happened? And more importantly, why has there been no support from authorities? 
You may have seen this article on TOTT News busted ADF court staging social media PR during flood recovery. And not only are these people not getting assistance, but the ADF are going into these regions and are just standing around taking photos for their social media PR, which has been blasted. Scott Morrison sharing and a lot of prominent personalities leaving their thoughts to that right there. Even so much as having to get in their own helicopters for supply drops. This is how bad the lack of assistance has got. And so we go back to this question, why has this happened? If they are geoengineering things, if we want to look at the bigger picture, why are they doing this? Well, potentially in this video, I can share some thoughts on why I think this might be happening. Now, some of you may be familiar with a very popular piece we published in 2019, Australian bushfires are smart city conspiracy. And this is still one of the most popular articles that we have done to date on the website. It went semi-viral within the larger international truth community in relation to similar things that were happening in California just months before that. But if we take a look through this, we see that a massive argument in this was that geoengineering was used at the time to keep the rain away. We can even see on Channel 7 there was military operations with metal or plastic fibers called chaff that were released into the air on the 24th of October, ensuring that the conditions were ripe for this to occur. And one of the biggest things that we spoke about was correlations between the smart city rail line, the proposed route, and the bushfire route that we saw at the peak of the bushfires. Very similar in regards to their trajectory. And this obviously caused a lot of discussion at the time in regards to CLARA, Agenda 2030, Agenda 21, and potentially the building of a high-speed rail line up the east coast of Australia. And a lot of communities were devastated during this period. We spoke about the Australian land grab and the bushfire aftermath. People selling off their properties, told that they couldn't return. Not being able to get insurance, just being left and abandoned. And we also spoke about how thousands remained displaced after the bushfires had occurred. Because all of these donations, all of these charities that received the donations, they just went up in smoke. The $1 billion bushfire fund just disappeared with the arrival of COVID just a month after. But in May of 2020, as we can see here, there was still thousands displaced while we were going through corona lockdowns and all of that nonsense. So all of this has happened. And the last place that we left off in regards to this discussion was the fact that authorities and the government were talking about how high-speed rail would become a COVID-19 solution. So whenever we beat COVID-19, high-speed rail is going to be a number one priority to kickstart the economy. And that's the last we heard of it. We left it there. COVID's been going on for two years now. We've been in this psychological operation for so long but potentially could there be a link in regards to what has happened with the floods what has happened with this bushfire theory and potentially how geoengineering links the two together because you can create the rain but you can also get rid of the rain as well and so a lot of people have been discussing this notion, could this have been a last attempt, particularly in the northern New South Wales region where people are resilient and people banded together and have rebuilt over the last two years despite lack of tourism from lockdowns, despite trying to be systematically driven out of the regions into the developing smart cities, they stood resilient. So we can't do another bushfire. That would be too suspicious, wouldn't it? Too many people would be talking about another once-in-a-generation bushfire. So what if we flip the switch on that? And a lot of people have been discussing that, and I wanted to share just a couple of thoughts in relation to that. 
If we take a look here, this is from the ABC, this has been the long proposed Brisbane to Melbourne high speed rail line. Now if we take a look up in the northern New South Wales region, what do we see here? We see Lismore as a major stop on this path. Now remember the Clara plan was from Sydney to Melbourne. That was a big part of the bushfire conspiracy. But a company called Hyperloop were expected to take over from Sydney to Brisbane. And up in this route, Lismore is a key location. Now what happens if we zoom in on this map here? I've done a comparison aligning, as you can see, the land parts with each other, just so we can see a detailed comparison. This second dot here is Lismore. Here is Lismore. Here is the high-speed rail line proposal. Interesting that it does go directly through some of the most awake regions in the northern New South Wales community, in the entire country for that matter. Very interesting that the high-speed rail proposal goes through there. It's very similar to when we were speaking about the bushfire conspiracy and some of these routes that were taking along there. So we take a look at this map. Is this just a coincidence, ladies and gentlemen? Well, if we take a look at the floods, Lismore completely underwater. Not only completely underwater, but it's now created a food crisis in the area. We take a look at another article. Worse than 2017, Lismore faces mammoth rebuild after flood as community inundated by loss. So Lismore goes underwater, inundated by loss, a major part of the high speed rail proposal. Is this just a coincidence? Well, here's where things get interesting. So we have the election coming up very shortly, just within a couple of months. And you know me, I'm not someone that believes in the political theater. The left and the right wing are part of the same dragon, in my opinion. But when you look at the dynamics of it, a lot of people, whether you believe politics are real or not, don't expect Scott Morrison or the character Scott Morrison to be there after this election. And unless you believe that somehow there's going to be a political upheaval by independence and United Palmer, which I'm skeptical of myself, I have my thoughts on that. So if you eliminate those two options, it only seems viable that there is tipped to be a Labour win at the next election. Unless Scotty can somehow pull off another miracle, being under COVID, being under the bushfires, that's been his legacy in this country. But if Labour get in, what does that mean? That means more Agenda 2030, that means more policies that are driven towards the communist agenda and would you have it that in January of this year Anthony Albanese revealed that Labor's plans for high-speed rail will become their first priority if elected so Anthony Albanese in January announced the establishment of a high-speed rail authority which will see a fast train built from Melbourne to Brisbane with stops in regional centres. So this is from this year. We left off in May of 2020 in regards to this theory, and here they are back again. What are the odds that now that COVID has gone away, it has now become the builder for the new economy? What are the odds of that? Just as were predicted. So Anthony Albanese reveals this is going to be a key priority moving forward. A few months later, and right before the election, some of these locations are devastated and wiped out. Could this all just be a coincidence? Could the establishment of the High Speed Rail Authority and the political theatre show designed to make Scotty look bad so they can get Albanese in? Was this all designed so that this could be the case? You let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you think that this is all related? 
because I can see how the Agenda 2030 push, which is our role in the United Nations to make sure that this is fulfilled, sustainable cities and communities is sustainable goal number 11, the smart city, smart train line, high-speed rail vision. It all has to do with the end of private vehicle ownership, which they're pushing, which inflation and all of this type of stuff will continue to where the point They've said, if you own a car in 2050, you will be within the minority. This is what the so-called experts have said. It's part of this driverless vehicle push to get autonomous driving on the road, to get everyone onto trains that can go at super speeds, to save the planet, to reduce crashes. It's all for your safety, ladies and gentlemen. And this is all part of it, to get people off of the streets. But how are they going to achieve this? Well, they need the land, don't they? And very odd that another natural disaster, just like the bushfires, seems to go exactly within that path. Could it have been when we said that Australia on fire was the beginning of Agenda 2030, keyword beginning, that we would end up a few years later after a COVID operation which has destroyed the economy? Here we are again with another natural disaster across the country. Very interesting. Now, it's not just Lismore that I wanted to talk about. If we take a look now at the map again, what happened during this COVID-19 lockdown? Well, let's take a look down here at Shepparton, which was a key location that Clara wanted to build one of their new smart cities. What happened during the COVID lockdowns to Shepparton? Shepparton was in crisis as COVID shut down the city. Estimated 17,000 residents, one third of its population, had to isolate. There were supermarkets that didn't have enough staff. There was a real crisis going on in Shepparton. As you can see here, the project Shepparton in crisis. This was just six months ago. So it's not just Lismore that we can make the link to in regards to the floods. It's this entire Agenda 2030 operation where we can see that other key locations across this line were a target, not only from natural disasters, but during the COVID crisis. They're trying to get this land. Take a look here at this article from the Shepherd and Times. Nothing left to sell. Land crisis worsens. Residential land in Shepherd and has become so scarce that real estate agents have virtually nothing left to sell. There's no public land available for you to buy, guys. It's all owned by conglomerates now because this is the solution. We need to come in here and take this burden off of you guys. And could this be the same as, as what we see up in these northern New South Wales regions? So we go back to the map here and let's explore even further. Goldburn. Let's pick this one out here. Goldburn. What has been happening during the floods in Goldburn? Floods. Let's go back to the map. What's next? Central Coast. Central Coast included in Disaster Relief Declaration. March 6th, 2022. So it's not just the northern New South Wales region. If we take a look at the map, it starts to go... Uh, to the central coast, just below Newcastle here. Newcastle turned into a smart city. We've just explored Shepparton. We've just explored Goulburn. We've explored Lismore and the surrounding regions. We obviously know about Sydney and the flash flooding and weather warnings that have been uh, forecast for New South Wales that have been continuing across New South Wales. Sydney, Hornsby, Glenfield. All of these locations under the Central Coast are all included within this smart city rail line. Let's take a look at this article. Seymour, Victoria. Farmers to take illegal action after being blindsided by the Victorian government campsiting ruling. Farmers have had enough of this. You can read the rest. Take a look back at this map. Well, there's Seymour there, right near the Melbourne airport. So is this all just a coincidence that farmers are being targeted, that land is being bought up, that we're seeing the aftermath in the Clara zone? And now with these floods, we're starting to see the exact same beginning that we saw after the bushfires. 
happen up the east coast here where communities have been affected is this just a coincidence i mean let's take a look at wagga wagga here talk about transformation wagga wagga the first fully automated farm to be built 20 million dollars robots farming no human labor there anymore when did this come out may 28th 2021 a year after the bushfire so we've seen what's happened to that region haven't we down in wagga wagga so i'm not just targeting out lismore here guys there seems to be a clear coincidence along this entire line from sydney to melbourne we're seeing more land selling and more construction of ai and automated technology albury was stated to be a smart city location so we have to watch that all of that's happening within the Clara Zone, but from Brisbane to Sydney, now we've had another natural disaster. Something for you to all think on there. East Gippsland in Victoria, this was a key part of the Clara plan as well. Defence increase, flood help for rescues. So if we go back to the smart city conspiracy, I look in these comments here, we see we live in East Gippsland and we've been noticing massive chemtrailing all along. In January of 2022, East Gippsland was hit during this period. Now it's being hit with floods. So just to add further to this discussion, yes, we know that geoengineering is happening. And if you deny that, then you really haven't been doing enough research or even investigation to challenge your own viewpoints. You've just been appealing to mass consensus and authority. And that's fine because... Most of the planet does that, so you are in the majority and you should feel good about that. But for those of us who like to critically think, what do you guys all make of this coincidence? It's one thing to talk about geoengineering, but what could be the reasons for some of these plans? Obviously, we know. Displaced communities drive them out of regions. This is part of the Agenda 2030 plan, but could there be an element where this is them coming in again with a new natural disaster that's different from the fires to clean up just ahead of a potential labor election with the high speed rail authority which can come in and just help out in all of these flood devastated regions am i looking too much into this let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and hey i could be all wrong about this covid could reappear out of nowhere and keep scotty in power we could go to a full-blown geopolitical so-called conflict all of these things could happen that throw it off but could this potentially be what they have in mind for now is this what they are launching on i guess i'm asking because one of the most important things that could throw it off is the community spirit within these regions who will not bow who will not submit and if you are interested in helping out, I'll leave a link in the info box below. You can head to Flood Recovery 2022. Make sure you get in there. Northern Rivers, Southeast Queensland, they're going to set up donations soon. You can follow them on social media to get updates on where people need help and what they're doing. So make sure if you can give, make sure you head over and help out and help these communities in northern New South Wales rebuild because the defense force isn't doing it and i think that there's a reason for this i think that this is all just to rub it in all just theater because they have something bigger planned and potentially it could be mopping up for the high speed rail line let me know what you guys think could this be on the horizon is this all linked or am i just a crazy conspiracy theorist from geoengineering to Agenda 2030. Could this all be part of the plan? We'll have to keep an eye on this, but hopefully this has added some food for thought. Ethan Nash for TOTTnews.com. Remember to check out the website for all the latest news and reviews and media from Australia and across the Pacific and across the world from the front line. And until next time, I will catch you all in the next video stay safe to everyone out there in northern new south wales and as i said i'll leave a link for you all to 
head over and make sure that you can help out and make sure that they can't, if this is the case, get this high-speed rail plan, which seems to go straight through Lismore, up and going. Let's hope that they can get this all rebuilt before the election comes and before all of the hatred on ScoMo gets the high-speed rail elected. Ethan Nash for TOTT News signing off, and I'll catch you all in the next video.